Now we're not done. We're not done because all we figured out is the magnitude of the overall vector. We haven't figured out its direction, indicated by its angle. So now we have to figure out that angle. Now we're going to need a trig function. What would be a good trig function to use? Well, remember the convention is to use the sides we were originally given. That was indicated by the asterisk. Originally we were given this side adjacent and this side opposite. So we need a trig function that deals with the opposite and the adjacent sides. That's the tangent, isn't it? So, if you wanted to, you could use the hypotenuse now because we figured out that number, but usually people use the numbers they were originally given. So we'll do the problem the conventional way. We know that the tangent of theta is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Remember that the symbol theta was not actually mentioned in the original problem. We had to uh, invent that symbol in order to give a name to the angle that we need. You don't have to call it theta. You could call it something else if you wanted, but you have to have a consistent name for it. Now, the length of the opposite side here was 4, and the length of the adjacent side was 5. Notice that I'm not including the sides, because these are lengths, and lengths are always positive. If something's always positive, you don't need to indicate its sign. When we're working with trig functions, we're just working with lengths, which are always positive. All right, I'm going to postpone this calculation for a moment. We have to get the theta by itself. How do we get the theta by itself? By removing the tangent, and we do, you do that by doing the opposite. Well, what's the opposite of a tangent? The opposite of a tangent is an inverse tangent. So we need to take the inverse tangent, and if we do it to the left-hand side, we have to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side as well. taking the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, so I'm obligated to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side as well. Now, if you start with theta, and then you take its tangent, and then you take its inverse tangent, where do you end up? Well, remember that inverse tangent is just the opposite of tangent, so they undo each other, and you end up just with the tangent. but we still need to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. Now, again, this is algebra that we've done many times in these videos, but previously I haven't been writing this step down explicitly. I haven't been explicitly writing down that we're taking the inverse tangent of the left-hand side. I've been saying it, but I haven't been writing it down, uh, maybe just to save space on the board. Uh, but now I'm feeling a little bit guilty, uh, like I said, about skipping that step. If your algebra skills are weak, it's better not to skip any steps. If your algebra skills are weak, you should write down every step including this step, until uh, it's very obvious to you. So maybe now sometimes I'll write down this step. Uh, we're doing the opposite. To get rid of the tangent function, we have to take the inverse tangent. And since we're doing that to the left-hand side, we have to do it to the right-hand side. So even though I haven't been writing this step down um, previously in the videos, uh, I've certainly been doing it, uh, even though I've just been skipping ahead to here. All right, now we can figure this out in one step on your calculator. You don't need to split this up into separate steps. Um, do the inverse tangent. If your calculator doesn't put this parenthesis in, you have to put it in yourself uh, to indicate that there's two things involved in the inverse tangent. Uh, and then you can do this all in one step. And on your calculator, you should get that theta comes out to be 39 degrees. If you got that theta was 0.67, you must be in radians mode, not degrees mode. Your calculator should have told you that theta is 39. If your calculator told you that theta is 0.67, you need to change your mode out of radians and into degrees. Uh, but if your calculator said that theta is 39, then you're in good shape. Remember here, we're not taking the tangent of 4 fifths. We're taking the inverse tangent of 4 fifths. This could also be called the arc tangent of 4 fifths. Remember, this negative 1 is not an exponent. It just means inverse tangent. But right now we have a full answer. Um, what's the overall vector? Well, the overall vector has a magnitude of 6.4. And um, its direction can be indicated by this angle of theta, 39 degrees, with the positive x-axis. Notice that this isn't going to mean anything to the um, reader unless you show them your picture as well. So if you want to indicate um, the direction with an angle, um, it's a good idea to include your picture so they can see where the 39 degrees is. Otherwise, they don't know whether you're talking about this angle or maybe this angle.
Remember, um, this is uh, the angle that you end up focusing on if you draw the x component and then the y component. If you had started by drawing the y component first and then the x component, you would have ended up focusing on a different angle. So if you got a different angle, that's okay, uh, as long as you were following along with a systematic approach. But you should certainly try doing it this way as well to make sure that you're understanding the method and you can get the answer that we got. Remember that we've learned two types of trigonometry. We've learned what to do when you're given one side and one angle, and we've learned what to do when you're given two sides. Well, this was a problem where we were given two sides, right? We were given these two sides, and uh, then we figured out everything else. So you can see that um, when you're given the components uh, and asked for the overall vector, that's a trigonometric problem where you're given two sides. The other type of problem we learned how to deal with is when you're given one side and one angle. Well, that was the other type of problem, which is where you're given the overall vector and you have to break it down into components. So as we've, al we've already learned how to do that, we've already learned how to find the overall vector and break it into components. There you use the trigonometry for when you're given a side and an angle. And now we're learning how to take the components and build up the overall vector. And that's the trigonometry where you're given two sides. One of the most important things to take from this is that if you're asked for the overall vector, it's not enough to find its magnitude. The overall vector has a magnitude and a direction. A good way to indicate the direction of the overall vector is to label one of the angles that is formed by the overall vector and then calculate that angle.